Okay, this video is to explain uh, the reality constant S and how it was derived and how Jupiter's mass equates to an electron charge. Okay, essentially uh, my theory is similar to Niels Bohr's theory is that atoms and star systems are relative representatives of each other. Except in my theory, I'm, a little, I'm going to be a little more specific. Um, I state that the inner solar system is equivalent, relatively equivalent, to the nucleus of an atom. And the outer solar system, where the gas giants are, are actually relative, relatively equivalent to electrons. So all gas giants, in my theory, are actually electrons. So the key to finding the value of s was to find an at the atom, the exact atom, that our solar system was equal to. Well, based on that, the fact that based on the fact that there was four gas giants uh, in the outer solar system, I looked up the, the periodic table and f tried well and looked up the atom that had four electrons orbiting its nucleus, and that atom was the beryllium atom. Um, so basically, the beryllium atom was our relative equal to the, the our solar system. So how was the value of s derived? Basically, the value of s is the scale difference between the beryllium atom and our solar system. That's basically it. So let me go on into let me go on and explain how the actual value was calculated. Okay. So uh the initial s value which was the difference between the size of the beryllium atom and our solar system was 5.625 times 10 to the power of 22. This is roughly calculated, but then I related it to the speed of light, which was 3 time, 3.1 times 10 to the power of 8. And I noticed that c to the, c to the power of 2.68 was equal to 2.5, sorry, 5.625 times 10 to the power of 22. The, the, what I noticed, and the key to this, to this relationship was that 2.68 was very, very close to Euler's mathematical constant, which was 2.782. So basically, I just substituted 2.68 with Euler's mathem mathematical constant. So s is equal to c to the power of e. Now, some might argue that, well, it's called the way you derived 2.68 should be the number that you're using. No, not, not necessarily. Again, measurements that I used was the size of the brilliant atom and the size of the solar system, which were the best measured values in the scientific community. Not necessarily, not necessarily the most correct values. As we become more sophisticated, we'll have better measurements. But based on the how close, which I think was 92% different, 92% uh, similarity between 2.68 and 2.71, I just substituted and I got a better value of s, which was 1.10459 times 10 to the power of 23. To me, this is the true value of s. Now what is s? s is an exact scale ratio between the celestial systems and quantum systems. It's exact. There's no deviation. This is the exact it's called scale ratio between atomic systems and star systems. This is hugely significant. Niels Bohr postulated that our, our atom atomic systems and our solar system were relatively similar in some fashion, but he never gave an exact ratio but now we have one. So based on this, I was able to derive several equations. The first equation, which was hugely significant, which was the mass density equation, or the density equation. This density equation would eventually give me give rise to a mass equation. Now basically density was how, much, how far apart atoms were in uh, um, an object of matter. At the quantum scale, this a similar object would be s these atoms would be s times closer to each other. So therefore, the density equation was quantum density was equal to s times celestial density. Based on this equation, I was able to derive a mass equation, which was quantum mass was equal to celestial mass divided by s squared. As you can see, both equations use s to derive mass and density at the quantum scale. Re it's called relative representatives of celestial systems. And then based on this, several months later, I made another discovery, which I think was hugely significant, and validated the initial premise that Jupiter and gas giants were electrons at the celestial scale. I grabbed Jupiter's mass and divided it by s squared, which was the mass equation, and I got 1. Sorry, 1.56 times 10 to the negative 19 kilograms. 
that value was very close numerically to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, which is an electron charge. So the mass equation basically stated is that mass at the celestial scale is charge at the quantum scale. This is why S is so significant in so many ways. This also alludes to a whole a series of theories that came forward, it's also in my ebook, uh, to do with gravity. Our current gravity uh, theories are all based on attraction, and this theory alludes to the fact that there is also repulsion, based on f the fact that electrons repel each other because they're, s they're the same, same charge. So if I were to put two Jupiters beside each other, they would also repel each other. So my new gravity theory basically states is that objects of similar size and density would repel each other, and objects of significantly different size and density would attract each other. This is why S is very significant. For more information, you can uh, visit the website. The website is www.gpofr.com and uh, there's a blog and a forum there and a whole variety of uh, other bits of information. If anyone wants to email me, contact me, that's fine with me also. So that's it.